championship game we need you all have y'all have been tremendous every away game we've went to our players have said how awesome it is to play in front of our own fans our students because y'all make it the best place in this conference we need you one more time we got a huge game come out be loud be proud we win this game we go to 9 and 0 we got a chance to set history nobody has ever been 9 and 0 in the history of liberty football So let's set a record tomorrow. It's gonna to be a special time. Our team is ready to go. We need you there. We need you to be as loud as you can. Can't wait to get to that Flames quarter. When I say Flames, you say Flames. Flames! 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 This is Ashley with LU Sir. Winter break is right around the corner. Did you know that you can do CSER over winter break? It's a great way to catch up or get ahead on your Caesar. If you have any questions, stop by our table in Montview this week at the times listed here. Come and grab a snack or drink and ask us any Caesar questions you might have. We look forward to serving you. here for homecoming weekend there's a lot of festivities so much to do and Misha and I are usually pretty good at giving you all the details but I think there's a little bit too much to cover yeah so pull out your phones and follow along with us on the student activities website if you just arrived here on campus you can check in or register anytime until 7 p.m. there's a carnival happening tonight there's also something else happening tonight I just can't remember I believe it's the men's hockey game versus Stony Brook guys at 7 p.m. tonight and tomorrow at 12 30 p.m. do not miss it yeah there's also women's volleyball going up against Louisiana Tech today at 1 p.m. in Liberty Arena. We have our Chamber Singers reunion concert tonight, and Cinderella will be playing in Tower Theater all weekend. Yeah, and after that, the East Campus Bonfire happening tonight at 8 p.m., and the Welcome to the Mountain projection show in front of DeMoss is happening tonight and tomorrow night at 8.30 p.m. Do not miss any of that. On to the game day festivities tomorrow. Wake up early, drive quickly, but not too quickly because the alumni breakfast is at 8.30 in the morning, but please 
register before you come because we don't want to run out of eggs and bacon. That's right. And speaking of getting there early, the parade is at 3 p.m. So please be there so you can get a spot. Yeah, and then after that, the tailgate and the Flames Fan Fest is at 3.30 p.m. That sounds like a great day to me. Let's go. Let's go. On the gas. Have fun. Guys, we are going against Louisiana Tech at 6 p.m. Kickoff is at 6 p.m. That's right, and you can get discounted tickets, but only if you register. And a reminder, this is a clear bag event. I got mine. And then before you head out, Thomas Road has services for you at 9.15 and 11 a.m. on Sunday. Mish, I think that's all the homecoming details. I'm so ready for this weekend. Yeah, that's right. And all the homecoming details that you need to get tickets are on the website, so do not forget to pull that up. If you still want to donate non-perishable food items, there's still time. You have until November 14th to do so. Yeah, all donations will be going to the Blue Ridge Area Food Bank. Please visit libertydining.com for more info. Don't forget to see La La Land on the 7th. And bring a friend. <laughs> and get some free popcorn. Yes, and on a sadder note, even if you didn't make Coffee House, that's okay. Buy your tickets. Make sure to get them before it's too late. Yeah, well, we hope you guys have the best homecoming weekend ever. And guys, the party keeps going next week for CFA. Uh, well, I think that's all that's new. Enjoy your homecoming weekend at, at LU. LU. You have no right to be ordinary. God has called you to be extraordinary. L.U., how's everybody feeling today? You all right? I need you to help me out. Come on. We need a miracle. You are the miracle maker, God of the impossible. There is no power. Put your hands together, come on. You're the same God today, and the same God tomorrow. Help me see the victory you already see. Let my faith be today, what it will be tomorrow. When I see the victory you already Jesus, I believe, I believe. All right, you try with me. You say, we need a miracle. Yeah, you are the miracle maker. God of the impossible. Yeah, there is no power greater. Exceeding, abundant, more than we can ask or think. We call on your name. Jesus, you say,
Let's give it up for Anthony Evans and his music director, Erskine Hawkins. Thanks so much. Hey, this, is, uh, th this could very well be the most exciting weekend of your life. This is homecoming weekend. And I'm told that more alumni have registered for the events this weekend than ever. So it's going to be a great time. You saw the QR code earlier. Scan that deal. I'll see you all over the campus. Vicki and I look forward to seeing you. Have a happy homecoming. Flames Nation, let's worship together. Let's stand and worship the Lord this morning.
How did I start to forget all of the great things you did? When did I throw away faith for the impossible? How do I start to believe that you weren't sufficient for me? How do I talk myself out of seeing miracles? You are more than me.
What's up, Combo? My name is JC Sire, student at Liberty University and proud member of Liberty Basketball. And I'm just here to introduce Pastor Tony Evans, who y'all might know him from TV or, in, or radio or anything, but I know him a little bit deeper because that's my grandfather. I call him Poppy. And Poppy is such an incredible man. He's such a man of integrity. And he always lives out what he preaches. The same Poppy that y'all get is the same Poppy I get on a daily basis. He's so wise and understanding. You can come to him about anything and he's always there for you. One of the main things I take away from Poppy is his care and support. He's such a great man in that area and at Thursday at 3 p.m. every week I'm supposed to call him for like a five to ten minute conversation and sometimes I do miss that date, I do miss the deadline, and I forget to call him back, and he gets so mad at me every single time, but it's okay, it's okay, we're working on it, we're working on it. Just that little time in every week just shows his intentionality and care and support that he has for me and interest in my life and how much he really does care. So that's one of the things I take away from Poppy, and I really appreciate that, I really do. So without further ado, I just wanna introduce Pastor Tony Evans. Hello, Liberty! I am so glad to be here again. Got six of my family members going through school here. My son, Anthony, who sang, graduated in 2000. I'm excited for your new president. I'm excited to see all that God is doing in this great school. I'm excited for LU1, the emphasis on unity, and I'm working with Sean Moldy and, and the sharing with him on all that is planned. I am so excited to be here. Thank you for having me. They called me and asked me if I believed in free speech. I said, yes, they said, come give one. So I am, uh, I am very, very grateful to be here with you today. Now, if you go to Walmart, if you go to Walmart and you buy a box of checkers, and you open up the checkered box, you'll see that each checker has a crown on it. That's because each checker was created to become a king. When the manufacturer manufactured the checkers, they were designed to become something significant as they crossed over to the other side of the board. But most of those checkers won't make it to the other side of the board because they're going to get jumped on the way there. They're going to get jumped and cast aside because they will not realize their destiny. They won't realize their created purpose. They won't realize the manufacturer's goal in putting a crown on it in the first place. Because if that checker ever reaches its goal and crosses the board and gets crowned, its authority will change, its power will change, its movements will change. It will be able to jump others rather than be jumped by others if it ever reaches the other side of the board. Today we're living in a day when generations of people are being jumped and never reaching their divinely created reason for being, their destiny. And so they go through life. It's like the man who said, I was dying to finish high school so that I could go to college. Then I was dying to graduate from college so I could start my career. Then I was dying to get married and to have a family. Then I was dying for my kids to get 18 so they could leave. Then I was dying to retire, only to discover right now I'm just dying and I've never gotten around to living. You can go through your whole life and not realize your divine reason for being. You can live a decaffeinated life, a life where all the lead is gone. You can live a life wearing somebody else's jersey with their number on it because you have never gotten to realize the number of your own jersey. You've never gotten to realize your creator's reason for you being. And so you'll live your life like the flicker of a candle rather than like the brilliance of the noonday sun. When you come to realize that God has created you and crafted you for a purpose, a kingdom purpose, it will change everything about where you are, where you're going, and how you will arrive at your intended reason for being. 
I remember the true story of Hank Aaron, the home run king for the Atlanta Braves, and uh, uh, when he was doing a preseason game with the New York Yankees. Hank Aaron came up to bat. The catcher was Yogi Berra. Now, I used to be a catcher when I played baseball, and one of the goals of a catcher is to talk smack in the ear of the batter. So when Hank Aaron came up to bat, Yogi Berra started speaking in his ear. Yogi Berra said, Hank, you can't hit, your mama can't hit. Big man, little stick, you're not going to do anything. He started talking noise in Hank Aaron's ear. But Hank Aaron wouldn't pay any attention to Yogi Berra. Hank Aaron just kept looking at the pitcher. The next pitch that came down the pipe, Hank Aaron hit it over the center field fence for a home run. Hank Aaron ran around first, he ran around second, he ran around third. He came back, because Yogi Berra had told him, Hank, the writing on the bat, the insignia on the bat is turned the wrong way. The writing on the bat is turned the wrong way. But Hank Aaron didn't pay attention. He hit a home run, ran around first, ran around second, ran around third, touch home plate. On his way to the dugout, Hank Aaron looked back at Yogi Berra and said, hey, Yogi, I just thought you might want to know I ain't come here to read. See, when you know why you're here, you're not distracted by all the other voices trying to talk in your ear to keep you from realizing your divinely created reason for being. And there are a lot of voices in the ear today of our culture that wants to distract you, derail you, jump you, and keep you from reaching your divinely created reason for being. That is why I love Acts chapter 13, verse 36. It says, and David, after he had served the purposes of God for his generation, fell asleep. Acts 13, 36 says, and David, after he had served the purposes of God for his generation, fell asleep. He says three things about David, and these are three key things for your destiny, for your purpose, for your reason for being. The first thing he says is that David served the purposes of God. There are a lot of things that are going to call you to serve it. Some people live to serve pleasure. Some people live to serve power. Some people live to serve position. Some people live to serve prestige. People live for different purposes, and they may sprinkle a little piety on top of it by going to church or being a little religious, but that is not a sufficient purpose for living. He says David served the purposes of God. In other words, he existed for a divinely designed reason for being. For all of you students here today, there is a divine design on your life. God has a divine reason for you being here. And like David, you are to serve the purposes of God. When a, you have an appliance in your home, it is there to serve a purpose. The refrigerator doesn't cook, the stove doesn't freeze, the toaster doesn't open cans, and the can opener doesn't toast bread because it wasn't created to do that. The manufacturer so constructed it, even though they're all appliances, to fulfill a specific job in the kitchen as it is serving uh, the family that lives there. All of us belong to God if you've accepted Jesus Christ, but you have been uniquely crafted to serve the purposes of God. And when you miss that purpose, you are an appliance that has no warranty guarantee. You are an appliance that is of no benefit to the kingdom of God because you're not serving your divinely designed reason for being. You are called to serve the purposes of God. Now, most people want God to serve their purpose. They ask God to bless them, strengthen them, guide them, direct them. And all of that's fine if you're serving the purposes of God. He has divinely designed you for a kingdom purpose. That is a purpose that will bring him glory and advance his authority, his rule, and his presence in history. And then if you're not doing that, if you're only here for what he can do for you, rather than serving the purposes of what he created you to do for him, you will never cross over to the other side of the board and realize you're divinely created kingdom reason for being.
You know, if you have a television growing up in your kitchen, it's a small screen TV. It's a small screen TV because if it's in the kitchen, you're looking at the television while you're doing other things, cooking or eating or cleaning. You glance at it while you do other things. If you really want to focus, you're going to go to the den because that's where the big screen TV is. Most people deal with God from the kitchen of their lives. They glance at him while they do other things. They glance at him while they're busy with their lives. They glance at him while they move about about in their goals. God does not want to be something you glance at in the kitchen of your life. He wants to be the big screen that you focus on in the den of your existence. And so it is absolutely critical that you are serving the purposes of God. There is a divinely designed reason for your being. It says David served the purposes of God. My late wife, Lois, uh, uh, we would love to go to New York. And whenever we went to New York, the place we would love to go is Fifth Avenue. Because Fifth Avenue is where all the nice stores are in New York. I love New York. I love the cuisine. I love Broadway. I love the lights 24 hours a day. We would love going to New York. She would love going to Fifth Avenue. And on Fifth Avenue was her favorite store. It was Saks Fifth Avenue. If you've ever been to New York, Saks Fifth Avenue has all of these display windows. You go during Christmas time and they'll put a whole show on in the display windows in Saks Fifth Avenue. Well, she would go to Saks Fifth Avenue because she loved that was her favorite store now in Saks Fifth Avenue they would have dummies in the windows mannequins on display these are good looking dummies I saw a dummy in Fifth Avenue one time dressed in a suit sitting in a Ferrari this was a bling bling dummy this dummy was looking good and living large why did the owners of Saks put a successful looking dummy in the window of Saks the owners of Saks put a good-looking dummy in the window of Saks because they knew there were dummies like us walking up Fifth Avenue. And they wanted one dummy to say to another dummy, come on into the kingdom called Saks because there's floor after floor after floor after floor of so much more. God wants you to be successful so he can put you on display so that when you are on display, you will draw people into his kingdom. You will draw people into his environment. You will draw people into his world so they can see there's something in the kingdom for them. So whatever you are called to do to serve the purposes of God, it is always to be a benefit to God's bigger and grander purpose. David served the purposes of God and it says he served it for his generation. God wants to know how whatever he's given you, you're going to use it to impact a generation that is in desperate need of direction and desperate need of the divine. God has not just called you to go to school and do a study and learn a craft. He's called you to serve his purpose through whatever he's going to equip you to do. So that if you're not, if you're a doctor, you're not just a doctor. You're God's representative in the medical field. So the medical field sees what God looks like when God helps hurting people. If you're a lawyer, you're not just a lawyer. You're God's representative in the Bar Association. So the Bar Association gets to see what God looks like when God tries a case. If you're a business person, you're not just just a business person. You're God's representative in business, so the business world gets to see what God looks like when God cuts a deal. If you're a teacher, you're not just a teacher. You're God's representative in the classroom, so the classroom gets to see what God looks like when God teaches a lesson. If you're a coach, you're not just a coach. You're God's representative in athletics, so athletics gets to see what God looks like when God scores a touchdown. See, what God is after is looking for people who will serve his purpose in whatever kingdom realm he calls you to, so that there is no distance, no daylight between secular and sacred because everything now comes under the kingdom rule of God. And the kingdom rule of God is his comprehensive rule over all things, all places, all times, and everyone. So you are not to have a secular life and a sacred life. All of life becomes sacred because all of life is under the kingdom rule of God and to serve the purposes of God. A good friend of mine, a good friend of mine is Tony Dungy and uh, 
when Tony Dungy was going to win the Super Bowl, we would pray together uh, every, uh, every game, every week. So he would go during the playoffs. Tony Dungy would call me, and he would say, well, this is what we're going to pray for this week. So they kept winning the playoff games, kept winning the playoff games, kept winning the playoff games. And finally, he comes to the Super Bowl against the Chicago Bears. And so I call him. I say, Coach, what's your prayer request today? Coach Dungy said, my prayer request today as I come to the Super Bowl is that whether we win or lose, I will make his name great. See, that was a kingdom perspective on a Super Bowl championship. He wanted to use the platform that God had given him to advance God's name and to promote God's kingdom. And that is what God is looking for. Your value to God is your usefulness for his kingdom. And if you do not attach your craft, your studies, your skills, your talents to that purpose you will not live a meaningful life you will exist and maybe you'll exist with bling bling but you will not exist with purpose many of the problems that people young people are facing today of depression and anxiety and emptiness and loneliness is none of those things it is the absence of a purpose in life but when you have a divinely designed purpose anxiety decreases depression decreases why because now you have a reason, God-given reason, to get up in the morning and do whatever he's called you to do because he's invested in you because you have invested in his kingdom. You're serving the purposes of God. Sand is free on a beach. On a beach, sand is free. You just walk on the sand and it's free. Now, if you want sandbags for a playground, that free sand is going to cost you. You got to go to Home Depot or Lowe's to buy a bag of sand for the playground. If you want sandpaper, which is really sand with glue on paper, you got to pay for that. That same free sand that's in the bag that's on the paper is now going to cost you. If you use sand and computer chips in in in, in, in Napa Valley and in in, uh, in California, where they where they do all this high tech stuff, that's going to be expensive sand. That's the same free sand that was in the bag that was on the paper that now is so expensive because it's now being used uh, in uh, California to make computer trips. How did that regular sand become so expensive? You know why it's expensive? Because it's being used differently. And when God sees that He can use you. When God sees you're of benefit to him, when God sees his kingdom is going to advance due to the training, the skills, the opportunity, and the, and, and the things that he has entrusted to you, you become very valuable to the kingdom. God, unfortunately, has a lot of valueless Christians, people he can't do anything with. They're like sand on the beach to be walked on, not valuable sand for the computer chips of the kingdom because he can't use them. They are of no value to the person purposes of God. David served the purposes of God. He had a divinely designed reason for being, and that divinely designed reason for being gave him purpose and gave the generation impact. What you want to be able to say is when you've finished your life, what is the impact you've left behind for the glory of God and for the advancement of his kingdom through what you have done to benefit people in his name? And if that is not your goal, your training will have been wasted, your career will have been wasted because it will have had no eternal value attached to it. It says, David served the purposes of God. The question is, what is going to be my kingdom impact through the opportunity given me at Liberty University and whatever I'm majoring in, whatever opportunities come to me, how will the kingdom of God be advanced because of the opportunities that God has granted me? You know, today you can look good as a bowler. You can look real good as a bowler. They got bowling pants, bowling shirts, bowling gloves. They got all kind of fancy stuff and then you get a fancy bowling bag. Then you get a bowling ball. You put your three fingers in it. You cock it. You twist your wrist. You kick out your leg, you can look exquisite as a bowler. But no matter how good you look, if that ball is rolling down the gutter and them pins are still standing, you're just a good-looking failure. And a lot of folks are good-looking failures. They look good, but no pins have been knocked down. The question of a bowler is his impact, not his style. So the issue is what is going to be your impact for the kingdom of God as you join in with the unity of this university, LU1, coming together as 
one family of people, all building champions for Christ, who are advancing the cause of God's glory and the advancement of God's kingdom through whatever the discipline is so that you live a life that is worth living. The last thing it says is that he fell asleep. You are not living in the, you are not existing in the world of the living on your way to the world of the dying. You are living in the world of the dying on your way to the world of the living. And unless you understand that as time goes down, you are going up, you will live in light of what's going down, not what's going up. You are now, the day you were born, on your way down physically. But God, for his kingdom purpose, is executing and taking you up spiritually. And the more you live for the purposes of God, the younger you will become on the inside, even as you are growing older on the outside, because you've attached eternal purpose to your physical existence on earth. David served the purposes of God, and he served it, and then he fell asleep. Time is not on our side. I didn't know I would lose my wife a few years ago when she suddenly went home to be with the Lord. It reminded me of the uncertainty of time. You don't know what your time is. So now is the time to maximize time for the reuse of time for the glory of God for why he has placed you in time. So now you must maximize your time for his eternal purpose. David served the purpose of God. And when he served the purposes of God, it says, then he fell asleep. Life is like a coin. You can spend it any way you want. You just only get to spend it once. So maximize the privileges and the opportunities by attaching them and not detaching them from the purpose programs of God. So every person here must ask the question, God, what is your purpose for me? Now you may ask the question, how do I find my purpose? Well, you go to the mix master. The mix master is where highways cross, usually near downtown. And this is where you can find your purpose. And I guarantee you, if you go to the mix master, you'll locate your purpose. Number one, your purpose will always include your passion. It will always ignite a fire in you. Jeremiah said, woe is me if I don't do it. Jesus said, the zeal of this house has inspired me. So when it comes to whatever God has for you, it will burst a fire inside of you. It will burn for you. The second thing on the mix master of purpose will be your abilities. What talent has he given you? And everybody who's a child of God has been given a talent that God wants to use. So you marry your passion to your talent. The third thing at the Mixed Master Highway are your experiences, good, bad, and ugly. What are the things he's taken you through? What are the opportunities he's presented before you? What are the failures you have that you've learned from that you can use? He takes the good, the bad, and the ugly. He puts puts it in the blender of your experiences. So you take your passion, you marry it to your abilities, you link it with your experiences, and then you stay true to your personality. Everybody is different. God is not calling you to be somebody else for what he's calling you to do. He's calling you to be you because you are the only you that he ever created to be you. So you don't have to be somebody else to be the you that God has created you to be. So when you get your passion married to your abilities, tied to your experiences, that is consistent with your personality, now all you're looking for is opportunity. And when God sees that you pull that together and that you can use it for his glory, the benefit of people to advance his kingdom, now he can do something with you that can blow your natural mind. You know, in, in the early 1900s, one of the, great, uh, one of the great tragedies was the sinking of the Titanic. 1,500 people lost their lives in the chilly waters of Atlanta on her maiden voyage. But 1,500 people should never have died because most of the boats were half full. Most of the boats were only half full. But the people in the boats were saved and safe and didn't want to reverse the boats to pick up people who were drowning and dying because they were so self-centered thinking that the people outside the boat would carry too much risk for the people inside of the boat that they didn't want to take the risk. 
What God is saying is I want you to take a kingdom risk. There's room in this boat for you to reach other people for me, impact other people for me, serve other people for me, win other people to Christ for me. I want you to fill your boat up with all the impact you can make for my glory and the advancement of my kingdom through whatever discipline opportunities that God has given you. And when he does that, when you have this eternal perspective in mind, Texas is pretty excited right now because we just won the World Series. We just won the World Series in Texas. And uh, when they, I was looking at Texas winning, they mentioned the name I remember. They called him Mr. October. Mr. October it was Reggie Jackson. Reggie Jackson was always shining during world season time. And so they called him Mr. October. I was sitting down one day and saw him hit three home runs when he was a New York Yankee in the World Series game. It blew my mind. They came to him one day, a news reporter, and said, why are you so good in October? And he says, you know why I'm good in October? Because I begin February with October in mind. February is preseason. He says, when I start preseason, I'm in preseason, but I'm thinking about October. And because I'm thinking about October, but I'm in preseason, I get ready in preseason, so I'm ready for October. As you matriculate through Liberty University, you in preseason right now. You getting ready for the real game. But if you establish the purposes of God, you're going to hit home runs in October because you're going to be living life for the reason it was created to serve the the purposes of God, for the glory of God, and for the advancement of his kingdom. You know, his name was Thomas Anderson. Thomas Anderson, a.k.a. Neo. You know him from the Matrix. One day, he got whisked into a computer-generated reality called the Matrix. When he got whisked into this new reality, he came in contact with a man named Morpheus. Morpheus looked at him and said, Neo, We've been waiting for you. Neo, we've been looking for you. Neo, we've been keeping our eyes open for you. And the reason why is because you are the one. You are the one we're looking for because back here, there's a lot of chaos going on. The world you came from is not the real world. That's the world you're in, but that's not the real world. The real world is back here because this world is influencing the world you live in. You and I are living in a world in chaos, but this is not the real world. There's a whole nother world behind the world that you and I see with our five senses, and that can only be perceived by a sixth sense. That is an eternal perspective. He said, Neo, we've been waiting for you because you are the one. You are the one to turn things around. You are the one to make a difference. You are the one to bring victory. You are the one to, to, to change the the trajectory in this world so that you will save the world that you came from. Then he looked at Neo and he said, now Neo, I got two pills. I got a blue pill and I got a red pill. If you take this blue pill and swallow it, you can go back home to your plain old ordinary life. If you take this blue pill, you'll wake up in your bed tomorrow and all this will be is a dream to you and you'll forget that you were ever here. But he says, Neo, if you take this red pill, you in for the ride of your life. I got a lady in this red pill named Trinity, a new love that you could never have experienced before if you take the red pill. If you take the red pill, you're going to have powers that you never could have dreamt of if you take the red pill because you're going to need your strength to be victorious in this world because in this world there's a man named Mr. Smith and Mr. Smith is going to try to defeat you. Mr. Smith is going to try to destroy you so you're going to need the power that this red pill can give you but if you take this red pill there's a whole lot of other folks of LU1 there's a whole lot of other folks who are going to stay with you who are going to rock with you a place called Zion and they're going to roll with you as you get victorious in this world so that you can have a change in the world. So here it is, Neo. Here's a blue pill to go back home to your plain or ordinary life, or here's a red pill to give you a destiny that will blow your mind. Blue pill, regular. Red pill, super unleaded. So you tell me which pill do you want? So to the students at Liberty and your family, I close the day by offering you two pills. Here's a blue pill, and you can go back to just plain old going to class, 
Plano hanging out with friends, Plano going to the dining room, Plano going through the games, Plano just going through your Plano life. You can have this blue pill and be a Plano student. But I also offer you a red pill. This red pill is for those students who don't want a Plano ordinary life. This is for those students who don't want to be just a regular person. This red pill is for those people who want to blow some folks mind because you're living for the glory of God and the advancement of his kingdom. I offer you two pills. Here's a blue pill for you regular folk, but here's a red pill for you super unleaded folk who want to say, when I end my time here, I want to end my time with Acts chapter 13, verse 36. I want to end my time saying, I serve the purposes of God in my generation before I fell asleep, and now I'm ready for my reward. God bless you, and I hope you pick up the red pill. strength when life is hard to choose you to choose to worship you in spite of our circumstance we give you honor today Lord. I'm being honest this is the hardest the hardest song my heart will sing my words are broken my dreams stolen how do I say what I don't mean? You don't owe me anything. But in my darkness, you still speak peace. So I'll lift my hands, I'll sing again. You're good to me, you're good to me. And as I wait, I'll sing it then. You're good to me. You're good until my heart believes I won't stop singing. You're good to me. You are so good. to pray day after day that you wouldn't let this be I was waiting on you but Lord Stop saying you're good to me. You're good, so, so good. good. Oh, even if the doctor tells me there's no medication to take away the pain, I bet you to. I'll praise you, and even if I have to wait for you to mend the heartbreak and believe that every tear that falls will you lose. Oh, even if you never choose to take away the struggle, your grace will be enough to pull.
You're still good to me. You're so good, Jesus. You are so good. We give you honor. We give you glory. You are so good. He's good to me. Can we say thank you to Anthony and Erskine for being with us here today? And let's say a big thank you to Dr. Tony Evans for speaking to us today. Hey, before you go, a couple of quick things. Right after this convo, when you go out in front of Montview on the lawn, LU1 is having their launch party. They've got food trucks. They're giving away free T-shirts as we celebrate unity on the campus of Liberty University. So thank you, Sean Muldrow and others who put that together out in front of Montview. Tonight, 7 o'clock, hockey game. Tomorrow morning, 8 o'clock, the Murph Challenge. Thank you, Nick Salonitis, for putting that together. 3 o'clock parade, 6 o'clock football game. Have a great, great weekend.